I did a bit of cleanup, turned the part over, and I've got it clamped down on one, two, three blocks, and they are on the machined face. So I know that these through holes are perpendicular to the table and therefore the spindle. What I now need to do is establish a center in this part. I can't do it by referencing the OD here because this was only approximately used to locate the center on the first side. Uh, so I have to do it to the bolt pattern here. Now, the reason I have to do this is because this is gonna be the first side machined on the lathe. Because this side gets the big counter bore in it. And I wanna do that side first so that I'm not trying to clamp a large part on the small boss that gets made on the other side. So I want to get this side flat relative to that side, machine the counter bore and I'll turn the OD. But in order to do that, I have to get the center of this bolt pattern. Now, that's not particularly difficult to do, actually. Uh, what I'm going to do is use this gauge pin, which is a very close fit to these holes. And I'm going to zero on this hole and then I'll come and find this one, which is diametrically opposite. And then I will use the half function on the DRO and that will give me the center position. And you can use any pair of holes that are opposite each other and it doesn't matter how this is oriented on the table because all I wanna do is find this center position. Now, if I had to put other bolt holes in it, um, I could actually align the part using this technique, um, but with the DRO, I'd be able to find this center and then map these coordinates from one of the holes, and then I'd be able to put in other holes relative to those without a problem. But I don't have to put in any other holes. They're all done now. I just need the center. So. there which is why that won't go all the way in yeah yeah so that is so that's there now use the half function on both axes now And like that. I don't know if I mentioned it before, the reason this track is here was just, there was some nasty burrs on some of these that I just skimmed off quick um, before taking the 
smaller burr out so the pins would go in. And here we are, center located. Next thing is to get this up on the lathe and start turning. And that is a uh, adventure in itself. It looks like I've got it about within about five tenths. And on a, on a big lump like that, I'm pretty happy with that. I had, to, I had to go off camera to do it because the camera was in the way. I had to get underneath it with a crowbar to tweak it and slacken off and tighten bolts. So I've got to get a couple more bolts in the back and secure it and uh, then we'll start turning. Here we are then. Um, spindle speed of 70. I'm going to try. I'm using an upside down boring bar in order to get the reach that I need both across the edge and out to the full diameter. And, in, and that means I'm going to be turning in reverse or the spindle will be going backwards. And first off, I'm just going to test the flood coolant. I've got this little spray guard here so that I'm not flinging coolant all over the place. So let's uh, stand well back. This view really shows the challenge in making this part on this machine. See the boring bar deflect. It would have been uh, really a good idea to come up with a more rigid setup because this prevented me from taking reasonable size cuts. I uh, got the job done though. The thud that you can hear occurring here is from an interrupted cut. There's a groove running across the outside edge which is caused from the water jet which is the initial pilot hole that the water jet made when it cut this slug out of the main material. And so that's coming around and hitting the insert and causing a heck of a thud. Eventually we got through all of that crust and got down to clean material. You can still hear the effect of the water jet starting slot because that's, that's still present but 
things smoothed out a lot once we got to a, a non-interrupted cut. And uh, this is just a little bit of footage to show the modified splash guarding that I put in place. I had to do this because otherwise so much coolant got flung around that the, the reservoir would drain actually pretty quickly. So that's, that's the reason for the sheet metal. Now we're on to the front face and the first order of business is to do a minimum clean up, get all of the uh, grolly off the front and get it uniformly flat. This is my favourite CNMG 432 insert, um, put at a weird angle in order to get the reach on this part uh, and as you can see it's having no trouble whatsoever cutting the 316 stainless steel but um, I really needed to get it on a more solid setup than this. I did come up with a better arrangement on side 2 so I hope you'll come back and see that. One problem I had is that the cross slide could not travel the full diameter of the part. So you'll see here the extent that I'm able to take it to. Uh, not a problem though because there is a counterbore in the middle of this part. So I turned that separately.
come to the final stage for this side of this part and it's just machining out the counter wall. Nothing too complicated here. Uh, as usual, start the counter bore by drilling out a hole in the middle and then working outwards with a boring bar to final dimension. And because this was now approximately six inch diameter, it's more within the normal working range of what I do on this machine. The only difficulty was that I had to use an extended reach with the boring bar to get across the gap um, because I pulled the gap out to fit this part in the machine. So again, a little bit more of a flexible setup than I would have liked and would have warranted a custom made tool to increase rigidity and allow me to form proper chips and not have to deal with all these squiggles. check excellent that will be Ken Hopefully you feel the same as I do, that it really is splendid and exciting to see this nice shiny part kind of come out of that gnarly piece of plate that it started as. You know, it's really rewarding to see this shiny surface finish. I hope you like it too. side two. I hope you'll come back again and see the final video in the making of this part and see some heavier duty setups. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you'll come back for the next video. Thanks very much and bye for now.